Welcome to Embracing Infinity, exploring the infinite oneness in the space of love and truth. Host Jennifer Rose is an international spiritual medium, healer, channeler, mentor, and transformational guide. Her focus is encouraging individuals to know themselves within the lens of their divine heart and highest potential to evolve within the frequency of love and peaceful harmony. Now, here's your host, Jennifer Rose. Hello, everybody. I'm Jennifer Rose, and thank you so much for joining me today. This is our debut show of Embracing Infinity. I'm so, so excited. Um, to be part of this creation and um, welcome everybody who's coming on and thank you for being here. Um, I'm so excited to be having our beautiful guest Debbie Romero coming on in just a minute. She's my beautiful friend, my soul sister and um, a fabulous medium and a soul out there doing great things for the community and for our spirit world. Um, this, this show I'm hoping is going to keep evolving and elevating into a beautiful, um, way that we can all expand our consciousness together and grow in love and grow in harmony and just be part of a community where we can just keep this expansion going. So I look forward to having a lot of wonderful guests coming on and we will just be on this journey of love together. Um, the infinite is where we are all from. It's our portal to the all that is ever was and will be. And it sh has shown up for me in the most beautiful and inspiring um, way. And I hope that it will show up for you too, if it hasn't already. So we're going to be doing some just wonderful exploration throughout the rest of the year as we keep moving forward with the show. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, but before I say hello to everybody here, I would like to bring in Miss Debbie Romero to join me. Oh, there she is. There's our girl. <laughs> Hi, Debbie. Hi, love. Thank you for having me here. Congratulations on your new show. It is an honor. Oh, my God. This is so cool. It is really, really cool. I know. <laughs> it's like we've turned it around because you've had me on your show and now I get to have you on mine. So it gets to come full circle as it always does. Everything comes full circle, doesn't it, everybody? Um, should we say hi to all our beautiful friends? Yeah, let's do it. It's let's that infinity it. lo of love, that eight just comes into a full circle. I it's, love it. it's right there for us, exactly. So let's see, we've got Maggie and Zoe are here and Stacia. Hello, hello. <laughs> hey, Zoe girl, Tammy girl. Look at all your, all your loved ones are here. Look at this, your girlfriend, Tammy. I love hi, all Tammy. the support. And for yeah. those on Facebook, you can't see who you are, so put your name in there. That'll be really cool. Yeah, some of you are showing up as Facebook users, so um, mm -hmm. we're not being rude. We just don't know who who's there, who it is. <laughs> but we love you. But we love you. Hey, Miss Tammy and Miss Ronnie's here too. Elliot is here. Oh my gosh, Hi, Fran Ellie. is here. Look at all of our friends are here. Oh my gosh, Cheyenne is here. Lee and Jennifer. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining yes. us, everybody. Courtney too, Courtney Lopez, I gotta say, she's always showing up and giving so yeah. much support. Like, thank you, Courtney, for being here also. Simon, yeah. my buddy, what's up, Simon? Hey, Simon. Simon, what's up? That's Simon's the dude, you, that's what's up. Yes, I love it. Thank you all for just being here and holding space. It's, oh, thank you so kindly, Tammy, for that love. You know, it's Jennifer has opened up the platform for so many of us. And look at you shine, friend. This is just so beautiful to watch you go into the next level. So cool. Yeah, I'm super, super jazzed, super excited, and very blessed and grateful for sure. So Debbie, I know that most of us know you very, very well. But would you mind sharing a little bit about yourself for all of us here in case there's anybody that's yeah. new on or going to be watching it later? <laughs> OK, well, I have a little cold, guys, so bear with me. Um, and, you know, I think my journey started very young. A lot of people always wonder, Debbie, when did you start? When did you start doing this? And so it was in my 20s is when I started. <laughs> and so with that being said, it was about taking care of myself. Obviously, I'm sick right now, but it was about self-care. And it was about trying to understand my own gifts. It was trying to understand how spirit was using me as a vessel and connecting with me as well. 
it's very interesting because I could feel spirit already coming in hot with you guys. So I'm coughing because there's a gentleman here that's just coughing. So spirit's coming in hot with all of you. So bear with me here. But <laughs> yeah. so with that being said, um, I just took the journey within for self. So the journey for me was to understand what was happening to me and to bring love back to me and to take care of parts of myself where I forgot to or I couldn't. And so as I allowed myself to find that solace or that inner peace, um, the mediumship just started to continue to grow stronger and stronger. And you and I always say it's like that boot camp, right? It's that boot camp feeling of like once you're in it, it's like be careful what you ask for because you're both we get so excited. We're like, oh, I'm going to heal. I'm going in. Let's go. And then you don't realize like all this you've been holding on to comes to the surface and it you through a different type of energy and it's kind of a little bit like whoa i don't want to i don't want to work through that what is that you know like wait a minute hold on let me let me pull it back i just kidding but really, I've, I've learned to look at different facets of myself and evolving and transcending day mm -hmm. by day and so that's how my journey started was for myself and to understand what was happening to me yeah, that's so beautiful, Debbie. And you're so right because um, we get so excited when we start going on this journey of transformation. And a lot of times we're, we just like want to, you know, develop our intuitive skills and we're, and then we're, you know, we realize we have to spiritualize the self. So we're like, okay, spirit, let me have it all now. Just get it all over with, all this. <laughs> you know, like that, mm -hmm. that same, like, and so now sometimes when I see people doing that, they're like, I'm ready. And I'm like, oh, dear. <laughs> We've had these talks. I play tribute. I play tribute. I go in. I'll take it. But really, you know, like, when you're slow dying, down. <laughs> it, it gets very exciting. But when you're starting to dive mm -hmm. deeper, it really can be emotional. It's, it's a lot of uh, looking at yourself, you know, and aspects of yourself mm -hmm. that, that we tucked away. And we haven't been, it was like, oh, I'll deal with that later. Oh, I'll deal with that later. Well, mm -hmm. until your cup starts to fill up, you have no choice but to look at it. And so one layer at a time, right? It's very true. And it's a never ending process. We will continue growing until we're moving on into spirit world. And I'm sure we'll continue growing when we're right. there as well, too. It's so true. Right. Um, you know, the the uh, the infinity um showed up for me like really kind of early on like because when i started going into um spiritual awakening and transformation like i noticed like my body would start moving in infinity symbols like my arm would or my neck would and i know that shows up for a lot of people especially when they start getting into those deeper levels where they're going into like kundalini awakening and the mm. you know the, the mudras and the yoga postures and all that showed up but um the infinity showed up like really really big time for me too and so i knew that that was like something really big connecting me to this higher consciousness and mm -hmm. um i'm curious you know and and it's deepened my understanding of love and and i've understand that you know it's we're going to be consistently unpacking love and growing love and understanding love. And I know because you and I are so close, it's been that way for you too, but it showed up in your own special way as well. Right. So I've had different awakenings and, you know, when you are going through that Kundalini awakening, I remember just mm -hmm. feeling the roar of the earth, just kind of really pushing through me and the energy. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful process. If you allow yourself to let it happen, um, it is a very, uh, the feelings that you get, the vibration and the movements of everything that flows through you, um, it's pushing stuff out of the energy field so that you can be that clear vessel. And so, again, you know, the chakras do hold onto memory and they're holding onto energy. So imagine the energy rising, pushing the energy out of the chakra mm -hmm. system so that you can purge and work through those energies. And so it mm -hmm. does have that rhythm of like, oh, this is what, what, what just happened? Oh, okay. Hold up. <laughs> you know, but, but it's part of the experience and it is, it is um, a very personal, intimate experience. Some of the things that we experience when we're awakening or the visions that we get, they're for you. And, you know, we get so excited and we want to share them and we're like, what does this mean? And that's where you go back within yourself to say, hey, what did this mean for me? So yeah. it's spirit working with you on an individual level. And for me, mine was very sacred. It was very personal. 
And I actually took time away from working with circles, taking time away from going into groups. And I just started to work on my own, would sit at the beach daily for hours. Once I learned I can go into trance and go into connect to my healer guides and things like that, I never stopped daily. I sat in the power and welcomed the healing. And I just let everything happen naturally and organically for myself. Yeah, that's so beautiful too. And I'm sure um, COVID was like, prime real estate for spiritual awakening for mm -hmm. so many people, you know, um, including myself too, because we had the time because we were home. And so the spirit could just kind of like, you know, process a lot of transformation. But I love what you brought up because a lot of people don't understand the energetic changes that people go through um, when they're having those like deeper levels of transformation too. And it can be really scary for people because they don't understand why they're getting these vibrations or little zaps or tingles or why all mm -hmm. this emotions coming up and what, it, what is this flowing through my energetic system? And um, right. if they don't understand it, it can be, it can be a little bit scary. I think fortunately for you and I, because we had enough clear audience developed, we could, you know, we can um, hear spirit, you know, talking us kind of through it too, but mm -hmm. you're very right. It's, it can be very private, very intimate. And um, those, you know, those visions we get are teaching us, teaching us things. And then there's this, uh, you know, like you said, sort of the, um, it's almost like a life review when you're living. Oh, right? yeah. We, I think yeah. we have those quite a bit, right? I know yeah. for me, every time there's a review and things are coming to the surface to relook at, I'm like, what's going to happen next? What's coming up? Why am I reviewing all of this stuff? What? Why am I seeing this? You know, but I respect it. Yeah. I honor it. I let it come to my awareness. And that's where you don't judge it. And this is part of the healing. You know, you actually really just give it love and say, okay, I give respect. I give it love. And I mm -hmm. forgive myself if there was something that was uncomfortable. Maybe, you know, as the story comes to your awareness, this is where you're giving it that love and the affinity of compassion for that story that's passing through your awareness. Mm -hmm. Many, many stories. Yeah, girl. There's so many stories. That's right. I got multiple books out there, y'all. My caution um, records like this. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that you know we we live a story here in this physical reality, but in that psychic space, there's a whole lot of storytelling going on too, and some of it's just. Um, if with our individual um, relationships with people and then when we're trying to work stuff out or trying to understand what's happened with an interaction then we're hearing all these things play out and a lot of times people believe it so we have to learn to kind of separate the story from what is actually true mm -hmm. but then also when you're in transformation also there's a lot of storytelling playing out and it's just it's almost like having um, more lifetimes in that reality while you're in that space and then you kind of come back into this 3d space too um, and those are all just meant to teach you things too, to give you experiences that you may not even have while you're here. So it gets really complex, um, but I feel like it's good we're talking about this because there's at least one person who needs to know, oh, that's normal, me too. Right, you know? and I think yeah. when we're in that 5D and we're working in that place mm -hmm. and we're getting connecting to all of this different energy, you know, the energy is coming and it's presenting itself in a way that you would understand. So if a person is coming to your awareness, you also want to look at it. What's the personality of that person? It may not necessarily be that specific person, but there could be a trait that's connected to that person that's giving you that energy or that that connection in that way, you know? And so this is where you really have to unfold. What is this trying to tell me? And that can get very difficult, um, especially, you know, don't we, we want to make things fit so quickly. And when we're in that 5D, it doesn't always work that way because 5D's got to come to the 3D. So what happens in heaven mm -hmm. got to be on earth. And so all these, it's great to manifest and it's great to, to, you know, to create in that energy field, but also how do you anchor that in and how do you make it a reality? And so this is where you be gentle with yourself because there's, if you believe there's no such thing as time or space, then we're already living in that space of time. And so it's happening, mm -hmm. but I mean, really, it ultimately has to do with your perception and your belief. And so if it feels good and you're enjoying it, you're getting the healing, I say embrace it. <laughs> well, and we and I know you and I have had a lot of conversations about perception. And that's one thing that um, that we could probably share with people, too, is that perception is very individual. And that, that's why people see things from different perspectives in different ways. So, you know, two people could be interacting and having the same experience and describe it very differently and experience it very differently. And a lot of times we assume that somebody else's 
perception or perspective should be the same because we saw the same thing or, or heard the same thing, but right. yet it isn't that way. Um, and even with mediumship too, right? If uh, we could all be, you know, for instance, you could have five mediums maybe talking to the same loved one in spirit, but we would all be getting different um, aspects of them that they might be sharing with us. Or some people will have a similar, if, uh, if it were, say, um, an experience of uh, spiritual phenomenon, some people mm -hmm. may see a spirit in the room and some people may not. And it doesn't right. mean that, that they aren't gifted. It just means it hasn't been channeled into their perception. It was channeled into their perception. Right. So what comes to my awareness is the movie Cardiac. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, if, um, if you anyone haven't had an opportunity to watch it, mm -hmm. it's a movie that I would highly recommend. And they're working with different mediums and some of them are going into different trance states and the way they're working with the mediumship and they all work differently, you know, whether it's through quilt or writing, auto writing, but the message when he puts it together for a book, it's all the same, but just worded right. differently. So we all get a piece and this is what's beautiful, um, especially like for paranormal investigations, we all get a different piece to create the history of the energy of spirit. And so there's a story for spirit that needs to be shared. And what one person may see is going to be added to the book that's created of their life that they want to share. And so you may be clairvoyant. You may be able to hear it. You may be able to feel it. And you may be able to see it. But how you're putting it together, that's the gift. That is the gift mm -hmm. of really unfolding the message for that spirit. Yeah, that's really, why it really requires a team. Deadly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really beautiful, Debbie. And, um, and I know that your approach is very heart centered, too. And so I love what you bring to the table with, um, with your research over in that area, too, because you have an understanding that, you know, every spirit has a story to tell, and maybe they just need to have their story told and see what we can learn from that. And it might not be a scary thing. Right. After all. You know? you know, it isn't scary. A lot of times mm -hmm. I find that if it's really coming in very intense, like this man that came in, I started to, I couldn't breathe, you know, I mean, he came in hot, right. but mm -hmm. you know, I, I obviously paused for it, but there's always a message. And when they come in quickly, usually it's out of saying, I'm sorry, or I'm, you know, please forgive me, or please tell them that I love them, or they're acknowledging something that's happening in the moment of now just to give that extra upliftment or support. And so sometimes we look at it as a scary thing, but really it's maybe something we're celebrating, an anniversary, mm -hmm. a birthday, uh, you know, congratulations, you got a new place, congratulations, you're empowering yourself, you know, there are a lot of ways that spirit's going to say, I see you, girl. Mm hmm. I love that. I love that. I so agree with you. <laughs> yeah. Get it, girl. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, well, we can we can have pre-existing belief system and see things on TV. And, and if we're not familiar sometimes with feeling things or hearing things or seeing things, it can be a little bit scary at first, too. And then only to find out like this is just grandma wanting to say hello or say, you know, I know you're having a rough time right now, but I really need to get your attention so that you can pay attention so that we can help you, you know, and it's, it's just a matter of like switching your perspective, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I've, I've told this story before of one of my um, students who way back in the day, you know, had this physical manifestation of a red handprint show up in her bathroom. And it oh, really yeah. just turned out, I know it really just turned out to be one of her guides saying, stop, we're shifting, we're shifting your story. And cause she, and then she did have some significant shifts right after that too, you know, change of relationship, change of, of place where she lived, a lot of big shifts happened. And of course she was a medium and didn't quite know it back then too. But for mm -hmm. a lot of people that could be scary, right? But all mm -hmm. we had to do was unpack it. And so that's, what's nice. If you can find somebody that can help you unpack it, look a little deeper and find um, what's really going on. Um, and then, you know, and then there's just such relief when you get to the knowing, when you get to sort of like the bottom of the the mystery of it too. Right. I think too, yeah. also, we have to understand that we believe that the characteristics and the personality continues and the mind continues as we pass. And so there are different layers of aspects that we're touching on when the soul is presenting itself. So we mm -hmm. could be filling into their, their personality and maybe they were not a cool person and maybe they were yeah. aggressive. And so, 
sometimes when you're going into places of like, let's say a hospital or somewhere where there was war, you're going to fill into the heartache of, of that frustration mm -hmm. of the soul that, you know, may have suffered or passed in a very tragic way. And that energy can come in and very dense. And so it can feel very scary and mm -hmm. sad all at the same time. And so with this, um, look at that and, you know, versus, please, you know, we're giving healing to that by acknowledging what they went through and acknowledging the mm. love that, that they needed to say, I see you. I'm so sorry you passed alone. Mm. But at the same time, when we're giving a message for someone else that it's your loved one, it's very different that you were there with them. So there's a different component on how the reads come in. And so, so going back to the paranormal part, I feel like I had to share that because there are characteristics mm -hmm. and personalities that are touched that can be very aggressive. And so that can be very scary right. depending on how you're open to fill into that. Right. And I think that's where kind of like experience gets into it. Like how, you know, when we've been doing a lot of mediumship, we learn to just let things go in and out, go in and out. We let it touch our perception. We describe it and then we move it on. We don't hold on to it too. And just because we're feeling into how somebody was when they were in the living doesn't mean that that's how they are over mm -hmm. in spirit world too. So it's yeah. just a matter of learning to make that distinction and having that experience, but also I think this is where we can start maybe just talking a little bit about trust, trust and love and spirit world, developing that trust, knowing that right. that's really important. Right. And that's where we get past the personality and the characters, characteristics. And then we're now in the soul, yeah. which is pure love. And so depending on what layer they're allowing you to see into or whatever layer that we're able to tap into, that is the part of our part of holding space for the story. So that's going back to everyone gets a different piece of the story. And so yeah. that's why we need many other mediums to be able to hold space and get the information in the way you will process and understand it because spirit needs your voice. Yeah, very true. And I think building that love and that trust um, is, is so vital and important, you know, because I just like, I, I wouldn't be scared to go into you know, <laughs> to go into a, a place I just wouldn't be just because I have the trust and I have the love, the spirit. Well, I know they have my back. I know, I know it's going to be okay. And I know there's a soul behind every personality, just like you said. Um, right. But it's, you know, I think it takes us a while to get to that place too. Um, right. I do believe Greg had a question. Okay. Um, can, we, can we put Shifting a up? story, what layers right. of partnership? Yeah, yeah. What layers? Uh, what layers of partnership with guides empowers <laughs> that kind of interactive state? You want to take that one, Debbie? So it depends on what guides you're working with. So if you trust with your guides and how they're working with you and the uh, bond that you are trusting to say, okay, tell, sh tell me your story, tell me the story. You know, so shifting a story with their assistance, if you're working with your guides, you're trusting in them to, to bring that awareness to you. So what layers of partnership with guides empowers that kind of interactive state? Um, if you're looking at empowering, right? It's not the guides that are going to be empowered. It's you. Oftentimes we go to the discarnate and we look at the discarnate for help, but ultimately it's up to you to feel empowered, to trust that you're getting the information, to feel that you're feeling with all your senses and knowing that you are getting the exact information and the story for the soul. And then the beauty of it is that you can go, here's an exercise that I was going to do with my students. We were going to get, I was going to get a story, find the story of, of, of a tragic passing or just something that of, of it doesn't even have to be tragic, but a history. Have them chime in and then validate it. Start practicing with your own self, your own mediumship muscle to say, okay, what are you feeling with this? You know, how are you feeling into the energy? And then go back to the facts. What's tangible? You got to research. What's the address? Who passed there? You know, how what history was on that land? And so this is where you start to investigate and work for yourself and you're developing that muscle for you. So when your guides come in, they're holding space and they're there with you, but ultimately it's you that has to stay empowered and trusting yeah, that you're yeah. doing, you're getting the story as mm -hmm. it needs to be given. Yeah, I love that you said that, Debbie. Thank you so much too, because mm -hmm. we do kind of put 
um, spirit world on a pedestal. And I know if, as they work through me, they're always saying, no, you're, we're the same. You know, we're just having a different experience. We are still spirit too. We put them on a pedestal and kind of give our power and ask them to answer all our questions mm. and do everything for us and forget that we have a higher self too. We are the divine also, and we can connect to the divine. We can connect mm. to our own higher self as our guide too, and have that empowerment. And that's why sometimes they don't answer all of the questions for us, you know, or they give us a little bit of a riddle because we're meant to be, you know, prove to ourselves that we can do it, that we have it within us, the powers within us, just like Dorothy. It always comes back to Dorothy, right. you know, but so true. And, yeah. And this is where we're unfolding the message. So when you do get a piece of evidence, that piece of evidence needs to be unfolded. So for you, Greg, you know, like if, if you're looking at the heart, who would have had a heart condition? Would it have been connected to father? Did How does that heart connect to you and your father? How did that make you feel? Where were you at in the home when your father was ill? Was he laying in the bed? So you're really unfolding just the moment of the heart. And so when spirit is giving us that golden nugget, there is a there's an unfoldment of that evidence. So it's just like, oh, I have a cat. No, you have a cat that would have been like Garfield and it would have sat in this yellow type of tile and you know the cat would come around these brown kind of you know uh cabinets and so this is unfolding the message and so this as you start to develop the muscle and trust it you know there's mm -hmm. so much to just the one piece of evidence Right. So true. And it will keep growing and growing for all those people who are developing their mediumship. That evidence will keep growing and it might kind of come in as a little bit of a drip, you know, like an IV drip in the beginning, you know, where it's like one piece at a time. But eventually it keeps coming and you get more and you're able to see the full story and you're able to see the memory as you develop more of your clairvoyance and put your feeling into it. And it starts to all kind of come back together. So it's beautiful teaching, Debbie, mm -hmm. that you put in there too. So, and if anyone else has any questions, um, put that in for us too. And then we maybe we'll get to some messages as well. We are the divine physical, Courtney. Very good. I am divine when I'm behaving myself. <laughs> We always divine because we are spirit. That's well, what's spirit that. Has a, spirit has a sense of humor, Eddie. I have to tell you. So, they, they, they really do have a sense of humor. So you never know. You never know what little tricks they have up their sleeves sometimes just to keep us um, just to keep us from not taking life too seriously as well, too. So um but um, I'd love to read this quote, Debbie, and get your take on it. And we'll see if anyone else has any questions as they come in, too. It's, um, forgive me if I don't say his name correctly, Fyodor Dostoevsky. That's got to be Russian. The mystery of human existence lies not in just staying alive, but in finding something to live for. So I wanted to read that quote to you and see how that rang for you. Kind of about like finding our, our purpose, finding our, our meaning in life. And I know for you and I, we live that every day. Yeah. I think a lot of us want to, you know, trust into that, that we are in alignment. And I think there's no wrong. We are exactly where we're supposed to be in this moment of our experience. And we always are striving to recreate. And that's the beauty of recreating and changing the story. But where you are today is an experience. And with the experiences, if they're harder, that gives you the wisdom to have empathy for self and for others as you continue to move forward and trusting that you are exactly where you're supposed to be in this exact moment. Yeah, that's beautiful. Because we're, we're never alone in this experience. We're not separate from it because we're spirit having a human experience. So that means there is there is a divine plan to everything. We don't have to understand it all. But there is. And, you know, if we can take that pressure off that, you know, we've like made some kind of mistake because at the end of the day, we understand everything that's happened has gotten us to be where we are now. And we can't really imagine ourselves being anybody different than we are now. Right. And it's all been all been for learning and growing. Doesn't mean it's easy, you know, and right. it doesn't mean we have to like it. it just means right. we understand there is there's a purpose and an intelligence um, that's always there for us. And this gives us an opportunity to look at the things that we've gone through and review your life experiences, because if those mm -hmm. experiences didn't happen, you wouldn't be as strong as you are today. It's keeping you going. Um, it's teaching you to love. It's teaching you to have empathy. It's teaching you to be strong. It's teaching you to move forward. And it's teaching you to want more and to change. And so for, 
For many of us, we always take the journey within for self because we always want something different. And then usually it's because we want peace. We want to be in a place of solace, of love. And we want to invite the kindness and compassion. And so with hopes that that's why you're diving, diving in, um, your movement forward will impress differently because you're diving in for change of the better. Yeah, that's really, really beautiful, Debbie. Thank you. That's really, mm -hmm. really beautiful. And, you know, we, we're always going to keep growing. We're always going to keep changing. We're always going to keep better. And I think um, there is, there is courage involved in taking this journey. I mean, a lot of us mm -hmm. don't always realize what we're getting into when we start this, but there's a lot of courage to, to love boldly takes courage to be willing Ooh. to yeah, living requires your participation. Being alive can just be a spectator's activity. Very good, Elliot. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And to participate means to be conscious and aware, you know, and it's like, and and I know you and I, Debbie, we've also talked about finding the balance of like being true to ourselves and being able to speak our truth, live our truth. Um, but we also are trying to hold space for other people that we're connected to as well. So it's like trying to find that balance. So we're not living for everybody else's desires, but also right. holding space for them as well. And, and it's, it's real tricky, but that's, we get that with practice with time. Right. I think for yeah. me, it's, you know, being in our integrity and our morals and our beliefs and, and walking the path that we are putting forward and, and it does take courage to stand up for yourself mm -hmm. it takes courage to want to say hey i deserve more or i deserve to be self have self-worth and that self-love and that self-care as we started prior oftentimes um depending on the circumstances for mothers who and fathers you know we have we live for our children we think about you know, having to care for a family member or a friend. And there's, with life being so busy, we often forget, what do I need? And so this is where we have to bring the alignment back to say, how is your spirit and soul talking to you today? And, you know, at, unfortunately, at times we wait until it's, you no, know, it's, we're in such a bad shape that we say, I got to make a correction. And so this yeah. is, if, if you can take moments within the day to stay, Self check in. What do I need today? And what can I manifest different? And how can I give gratitude? And those are the three things that I have in my journal that I, um, my daily journal of gratitude that I created. Um, and those are the three steps of really taking a look at ourselves daily. And it's not easy. Um, so this is where you give yourself compassion and grace. Even if you didn't get to get to do that one manifestation step. It's still there and the seed is planted. So don't yeah. forget to take care of you. Very true. And I know that's been a really big theme uh, recently too, is just <laughs> that self-care. And, you know, so many of us, we're, we're all sensitives, we're all empaths. And so that means we're probably have been the people pleasers in our lives, you know, um, and been kind of taught to be selfless. And there's nothing wrong with that too. But um, there is there is a point where you have to take care of you too, or you just run on empty, and then you don't have anything to give anyways to. Right. And so this, you know, the journey into higher consciousness or to enlightenment, whatever people want to call it, um, it's it is a journey of knowing you, of knowing you, right. and by knowing you, we know each other, and then we know right. spirit, and then we know the collective, and it all comes back to home. Right. And I think that it's a, it's a journey for sure. And it's, it's not easy to say, what do I need today? And if you're doing that, congratulations to you. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, we build a lot of presence, you know, and groundedness and, and that's where your confidence comes from is, is being willing to be courageous enough to look at yourself, to see where else can I grow? Cause yeah, we're all good people. We're all nice. But mm -hmm. where else can we grow? What else is there? And be willing to kind of journey into the unknown. Because spirit will take you there anyways, your own higher self. If you're on this journey, you will be taken into the unknown. Right. And it, it, you know, it can, uh, your sense of self will get changed, you know? And so it feels right. as if the ego is like going through like a death or, you know, and the ego is just our experiential self, you know, the part of us that has experiences. Um, but 
it, it you your your belief systems start to fall away and what you thought was true before changes right and now what's right. true for you is different and, oh, yeah. and that affects how everybody else around you feels about you and those kinds of things too so and that takes a lot of courage to be able to stay true to yourself to stay true to your path despite how other people may be reflecting what they're reflecting to you because they may not like the way that you're changing but what else can you oh, do? Yeah. You're, you're becoming a butterfly and you can't stop you can't stop a caterpillar from turning into a butterfly it just right. is you know this is why we say be mindful when we dive in because you keep going you there's no stopping you've opened the floodgate of transformation and and it's not an easy um journey but if you're willing to say i'm ready and you're doing it um, there comes the positive bliss, but also the hard uh, look mirror, you know, that mirror looking at yourself and saying, what mm -hmm. can I change within myself? And that's not easy. <clears throat> and people are going to see that you're different. People are going to react different to your energy and may not be as welcoming because you're also making them look at aspects of themselves because you're elevating, you're changing. So everyone elevates whether they know it or not, mm -hmm. energy is energy. And if you're coming from the from that spirit world and you're rocking it, everyone around you is gonna yeah. get that same, that same vibe. And so they also too will be healing and vibing in that energy. Yeah. And they don't even realize that we're just leveling on up, you know? Yeah, very true. Healing is contagious. So if you go into this, you know, in your journey and the rest of your friends and family aren't, they're going to be affected by you and it's not your fault, it just is. It's just that, it just, it's a, it's a triggering effect, but it's beautiful, it's meaningful, and it's meant to happen. Um, and so, you know, people may not like it, they may not like having their sense of self being challenged, um, but that's their journey too. So we let them have their journey as we continue to have ours. So, um, so it was a beautiful discussion. I feel like we um, covered a whole lot in a short period of time, but um, we can, um, you know, see yeah. if there's any more questions or we could do a couple messages or some, some card pulls for everybody yeah like to do that i'm either. i'm or open to everything yeah. i want to yeah. go to jennifer's um um comment here really quickly yeah um, when you experience grief your energy changes so much and jennifer you're so you're 100 accurate i in my life and this is um for many of us you know we've done the work and grief will hit us with a loss or a change of of something that it's out of our control whether an illness comes through or you know a loss of 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 your stability, we'll just say in some ways, something is different that you're not able to control, right? And with that, the grief sets in, and especially when we lose a loved one, there is a heartache there that changes us. And this is where we even have to bring in that infinity of love that Jennifer mm -hmm. is, you know, embraces, and it's not easy. And so when you're now in a healing journey of grief, this is where you honor, where you are every day. However that looks like for yourself, I say thank you. I, for a whole year almost, I went into a circle. I went into a class. I went into a healing course every day almost. And after my mom passed, I was in there for spirit art. I started doing spirit art, girl. Like, I don't even know. Like, I was drawing and doing readings. And I was like, this just happened. And you know, I was going in there and, and holding space, letting spirit come to me, letting them hold space for me. And this is where you want to develop a team of support, whether it's someone you can talk to, a professional, or you go and you, you know, have that girlfriend to have coffee or getting yourself into some type of movement of exercise and speaking, speaking good to yourself. And then if it's because of the loss of a loved one, develop a tool that's going to give you that connection, a meditation that's going to let you connect to your loved one so that you can start to fill into the essence of them as you invite them with you and to remember them. So yes, our structure is affected when we lose someone or when we're going through great grief and sorrow, but there is a healing component when we're sitting in the power with other loving souls that will hold you by the hand of God to uplift you. So I'm just going to leave you with that. And my heart goes to you because I've gone through that multiple different times, even yeah. in my healing journey. And I still um, honor where I'm at today. So we're, we're in that place. If you're in that place, anybody here, give yourself gentleness and kindness for sure. Yeah, that beautifully, beautifully said. And I know you and I both know grief. We know both know loss. And of course, if 
you know, as mediums, some of that's meant to happen and what's all meant to happen because it also develops that greater compassion for the people that we work with to, to understand what it feels like. And we're holding space for people in such a sacred and beautiful way. And, you know, their feelings are right there in our hands, you know? And so how we connect with our loved one to make that connection means Mm -hmm. the world, how we handle that, how we approach it, how we hold them in that space of love so that they feel better hopefully and more uplifted you know when we're done with the message too and it's not a linear process so you know you you can feel like you're getting better and then you might feel like you you went backwards but that's normal or you might feel like you're all over the place you know Mm -hmm. and loss is something that we all have in common grief is something that we all have in common but it's still connected to love because we wouldn't grieve if we didn't love you know and so in the end it all comes back to love I gotta say, I don't know, intuitively, I just hear, it's okay to cry. It's Mm -hmm. okay to cry is what I'm hearing. So oftentimes we try to stay so strong and we try, you know, we're in a healing journey. I'm this, I'm rocking chick and I ain't gonna cry and cry this. But you know, really tears, crying, feeling, hurting, feeling in the emotion is important. Mm -hmm. Grieving that. That's so true. Yeah, it's so true because that's just, I mean, that's our raw vulnerability, but those, you know, there's there's spirit in every tear that we shed. And it's funny that you brought that up because I was looking through some of my old poems and I, I looked at one that I wrote, you know, about a year ago, you know, when I was experiencing some grief too. And, and I was like, oh, wow, you know, look at that, you know? And so it's funny that you said that. So I kind of used poetry as sort of my catharsis or as my outlet for Me some too. of that as well. But it talked about that, but I talked about the tears and what they were, you know, and your heart cracks open when you feel grief, but it does allow more light to emanate from you. So, you know, the one gift we get is, you know, feeling more of that intensity of love and light within us and developing that deeper compassion. And um, it's, it is hard when we're not allowed to cry if we've been taught that way since we were young, that emotions right. are bad, sensitivity is bad. I, I still get criticized for that sometimes from, you know, people who aren't on the same journey as, as I am too, and they don't get me. And I can't, you know, who am I supposed to be, but me, this is how I am. This is how I'm wired. It's my, you know, it's my nervous system. And a lot Mm -hmm. of times my sensitivity isn't all mine. It's, it's theirs that I'm mirroring back to them because I can feel into what's going on within them and in their system. And it's just blending with mine. And Mm -hmm. what they don't realize is I'm reflecting back what's in them too. Right. We cry and we get emotional with the reading because we're releasing for them. So Mm -hmm. oftentimes for those who are doing the readings, that's also another indicating uh, indicator for you that you're also holding space for that person to release just as much as you are for yourself, because we are also releasing our own grief. So they're also holding space for us. So it's a beautiful beautiful unfoldment. Right. I love like this it's... comment too about lo- allowing your son to cry um, because that's so important. And I think, like I've said that before, it's okay to cry even if you're a man. Grief can be many things. It's very, very true because I do think it's it's harder for the male population because they are raised with some different expectations. It's better now. I think parenting's come a long way where we are allowing more children to have their feelings and learn with their emotions and not be, you know, like punished for having emotions, you know, and those kinds of things. It's gotten a lot better, but there's always, you know, more room to grow. And, um, and then we, you know, we get mad at people for not being able to express their emotions, you know, and it's not their fault because they've never been allowed to, and that may be a process for them to get through Mm -hmm. too. And so, That's where we can sometimes within our own growth is, um, you know, we may feel like, why isn't that person showing any, you know, compassion for me or emotion towards me? What is that too? And we forget what happened within them. What might their journey be too? And that will help to give us some space, you know, so we're not taking it so personally. Right. And usually it's not about us. And this is where we have to have respect Mm. for wherever wherever they're at in their journey. And we, we absolutely, um, react differently we hold our energy differently and so how we release we're all we're all working through that differently so just having respect is so important for a person and not taking it personal or you know not taking it like oh man you know you got it you got it to honor where they're at and give give gratitude that they're vulnerable enough in front of you takes courage to have someone open up to you 
It really, really does. And we just mm -hmm. sometimes want things to be done in our timing. And there's nothing wrong with that either, because, you know, maybe we are needing that in that moment. Um, but to also keep in the background that we can't make people be where they're not in the moment, you know, self-awareness is a journey of self, right? And so all right. we can do is keep working on us and, you know, uh, growing within ourselves. Um, I do believe Courtney had a question too, if we could come back to that too. Um, I wanted to make sure I acknowledged her there. Okay. Um, if maybe we are talking to energy that is just here in our static atmosphere, are we pulling memories from the person or is that all coming from the creator? So it depends on um, psychometry. So if you're looking at the atmosphere, what's, what are you around? So everything holds energy, right? Every object, everything that, let's say my mother lived in this house. She had a habit of opening up the cabinets, getting her coffee cup every day, loved her coffee. And so that, her energy is all over that. That was her routine. So if you move into a home and you're feeling the energy of a home, it has to do with either what's there or the people that are around you because energy is what's around you. So if you're looking for spirit and you're feeling into the energy or the essence as like, wait a minute, this is something different. This is discernment to say who's communicating with me who's the person that's coming through and also um fill into the message so this is where now you're tapping into your mediumship or your psychic ability so depending on what you're touching what you're around and where mm -hmm. you're committing it's all different courtney yeah so i hope i, I hope i answered that right i feel like you still have more in-depth yeah. questions because i feel like yeah. your house is a very active is the sense i get i feel like you like to keep things clean and i feel like you're making sure the energy is moving out so i can get the sense that you're like this person that cleans your house spiritually all the time i feel like you're going in there with lighting stage you know that that changes the energy but it never takes away from the, the history or the memory of the object <laughs> So you're still going to get the yeah. object and the energy of it, but it'll it'll give you a little bit of a enlightened, light, lighter feeling. If that would make sense. Yeah, yeah, really, really good too. And and energy is just information. So if you just think about energy as just data, it's just information. Then we don't have to be so scared of it. We don't have to be so like this is bad, this is good. So kind of like judgmental and it, it's just information. It can't hurt you, you know? And um, sometimes we think more about like what other people's energy versus our own and what we're bringing to the table. Are we ever conscious of like what our energy is like when we're walking into a place all stressed out? We may not think about that, but we may mm -hmm. think about what the other person is doing. So that's where it's good to be, you know, mindful and just remember like, information it can't hurt us it's just information you know what i mean wow. and so it may have some different wavelengths or vibrations but the more you come into your confidence of yourself as divine spirit and know your power know your power and just keep your power out versus like trying to pull it in within that more of that fear mode you should feel like pretty good with that you should feel like you can hold your own and you can go into any place and you'll be just fine and know that you're you know you're connected to the light and that's always there for you so nothing can hurt you but i understand that it takes a little time to get there. And I know, um, Courtney, you were also just a sidetrack a little bit. You were talking about your husband's inner child, and we all have that within us too. You know, um, we need to love the boys like we love the girls. Um, yeah, because they're going to be the ones taking care of those girls one day. And that way they can understand all the emotions that these girls will have. That's really beautiful. It's very, very true. We're, we are wired differently. Um, and um, that's, that's very important and meaningful to be able to understand the the male and the female within each of us and how to relate to emotions and how to hold space for each other. And I know Debbie, you and I, uh, we, that will kind of filter in a little bit to the divine masculine and feminine mm -hmm. as well as too, is that women, when we tend to be able to get our emotions out and feel heard and seen, then we can relax and kind of be into that Lordic feminine receptivity mode, which is usually how men would like us to be, right? You know, right. we're able to just kind of get that out and get our stress of our day out and get all of that mind out and be able to talk about how we feel without any kind of like, you know, judgment against it. Then we can relax and feel safe. You know, our cortisol levels are going to go down. You know, we're going to go into that rest and relaxation response. And then, you know, we're able to like hold space for our man too. So mm. Beautiful, beautifully said, Courtney. As you say that, here's the communication card. <laughs> There's the wolf. There's the wolf. Speak your truth, girl. 
it's all about the communication, you know, and that that's one right. of the hardest things for us to learn because everybody's different in the way they perceive because of perception. And so it's, it's a journey. And I think as long as we're willing to keep trying, keep trying to learn to communicate. Um, but first, we've got to get ourselves grounded, safe and relaxed first, because when if you know, if our bodies aren't right, and we're, we're in fight flight mode, because just our physiological um, self is stressed, it makes it really, really hard. So that's why Debbie and I keep talking about self care all the time. <laughs> well, I think, so. too, because we are holding space for spirit and for the energies of all of you. And so when we're blending and we're mouthing, we're allowing our our auric field to fill into the essence of what you're experiencing as a sitter. And so sometimes mm -hmm. there is grief that's sitting in there and we are holding space for grief and we're allowing the energy to move through our awareness and that um, also we're having to take care of ourselves so we can stay strong to hold the link and to hold, anchor that tree so that we can not be teetered when we're holding that energy. That is very, very true. So us mediums have to take care of ourselves so we can hold the power, get enough rest, you know, and try to eat healthy and stay grounded. So we have a lot of like self work to be able to do this work for spirit for the community too. So um, it's not easy, but but we do it right because we're devoted. Right. <laughs> devoted but this is dedicated. this is where you just be kind. If you're not there, and just be yeah. kind. Just take it day by day. You know, I try to take it day by day. I'm a rock star in that area. Like, trust me, I'm taking it day by day. I'm over here coughing <laughs> and poking, and you know, got my 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 toxins released because I did some inner healing this weekend. You know, so it is what it is. This is keeping it real. This is where I'm at today, and yeah. I ain't I'm going to keep it real. That's just what you got to do. Right. Honor where you are in the moment. Some days are mm -hmm. good and some days are bad. And that's just what it is. And this is where I think we make it complicated. We want to be this home, oh, you know, we want to be this angelic. All the time. Being mm -hmm. And really, I'm a mess. I'll be like, oh, my God, where are my keys? Where are my books? Where are my things? And, you know, I have my moments, <laughs> too. Like, absolutely <laughs> honor the all of it, you know, like keeping yeah. it real. And yeah, don't be putting us on pedestals because we're human too. You know what I mean? And it's like it's right. not meant to be that way. Nobody's nobody's better than anybody else. We're all That's just right. at different stages of our journey. And everybody's journey is meaningful and not one person is better. And if we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and each other when we when we go putting people above us or below us. It just it's right. it doesn't we help. All so see. that's another that's another lesson too. Yeah. So exactly, you know, and and Debbie, you know, we we help each other out. And you're all, you remind me to stay in the moment if I'm like projecting too much into the future or oh, I'm reliving the same story ten times over. You're like, just just bring it back to today, Jennifer. Oh yeah, thanks. You know, so it's good to have a buddy to remind us of these things because we need to be reminded sometimes too. You know, and I know we both have been through a lot of transformation, and it's it's our our tribe. We, we're very lucky to have you know a tribe of these beautiful women, mm -hmm. many who are here today who have supported us just like we have supported them. It's been, it's been back and forth. And um, those, you know, those positivity that we've gotten to receive from each other have been so helpful, you know, to, awesome. to know that we're loved unconditionally. We're very blessed to know we have all these beautiful women here that have loved us unconditionally and it keeps, it, it keeps growing. And there's like something very, very special about that. Right. You know, um, coming together with a tribe and you're finding people that are supportive, that are not going to judge you, finding a group of women or friends of um, that will listen to you without judgment. You know, it's important to have that one person. If you don't have that, then, you know, this is where you go into a, getting a therapist or you find a team. Our body holds on to so much energy. Even acupuncture would be great. Um, looking at ways to move the energy out of the body, a massage. Um, our body needs that that love, that connection, that touch of energy to be moved. And if we don't have mm -hmm. that person to do it for us, this is where you're going to empower yourself to find that person. I would go to the chiropractor. Yeah. I would go to the acupuncture. I went to an herbalist. I was like, you, you name it, I did it. So um, you're going to find what feels right for you. Wow. And, and over time, the toxins will release and move and you'll start to feel lighter as taking it day by day. So, yeah, yeah, look at Mr. Peter Bay. What up, Pete? I know. Hey, Pete. <laughs> Good to see everybody. We wanted to know, a couple I wanted to of 
readings this yeah you want to just yeah i know i, I pulled oh, a card and i want, just wanted to also thank everybody for their comments because there's so many just wonderful comments of everything what everybody's adding into the conversation so it's going to be fun to go back and kind of watch the replay because i haven't been able to see every single one but as um as they've been showing up too i also want to give a shout out to to kelly and todd too for over at sacred spiral for helping us to have this these you know because you have got your show and i've got mine here and they've got theirs too and so this is a really growing beautiful um space of love um and community so i just they they've done such a great job but i while you were talking i pulled atlantis keep the keep the big vision stay in alignment as you grow so that's very that goes very well with um what we've just been talking about right, you know right. keeping i love that and then right? i got gratitude look at that so when you're in there, give gratitude. Look at that power. She's like, yeah, I got this. I'm walking yeah. in my truth, power, and gratitude. So, and yeah. then here's your cosmic connection. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, we can shift so much energy by, in so many situations, by trying to find a positive way of looking at it or trying to find a way to be grateful, trying to find a way that this can teach us or help us grow. It doesn't mean we can't acknowledge the pain of things. Um, but there are, there's a lot of, you know, ways that really, really work that help us to shift our experience. And the more we love ourselves, the more we take care of us, the more we try to also see the good in other people, you know, we start to shift our perception and our perspective and more of that starts to show up for us. If we're just willing to try, it's all spirit asks is that we're just willing to try and show some vulnerability and some open heartedness too. So um yeah yeah did you want to give a um a message or pull another card debbie um i can do you want me to go to see who's open in the comments we have a, we have a few more yeah we have a few more minutes yeah okay. let's do it so let's see who's see here if everybody you. can just if, if you're on facebook just put your name in the comments as well and then just say where you're from and thank you so much for all the beautiful souls that are still here um yeah. I know I've read for many of you before, but I'm just going to kind of see where I'm guided to here and just give myself a second here. So for anyone who's open, please let me know that you're open. Okay, we've got Infinity is open and we've got Nicole, Nicole is open, Stacia, Lita, yeah, Jennifer, hey, Craig. Okay, Myra, I'm gonna, they're all open. Tammy, okay, Myra, Fran, we're all open. <laughs> Myra, Myra, I know that Myra has two people. Myra, I know Myra on a yeah. personal level, but for her, immediately with Myra, I have a big dog that comes in, and I literally feel that I'm being pulled by this big dog. But I also know that mom was also here, and she came in with like this kind of like a veil over her head, and I feel like this was her way of like just going into prayer because I see her holding a candle, and so I feel like this candle so it's like. If you feel that you're in the dark or things are a little bit like in the unknown, she's saying to light this white candle, if you would understand this. This white candle is being brought forward with little vassals, little cups of waters and things like this. And so this must be like some form of an altar of prayer. I see a little turtle or a little um, like, I don't know if it's jade, but I feel like there's this like little green uh, stone that's on your dresser. And so I know like both these spirit animals are, are spirit. You have the dog and you also have a mom is coming in to just give you that hug because I hear, man, I haven't had a message in a very long time, if you would understand this. And I was just missing them. And I feel like it was a birthday or celebration that you had that you wanted, to, you know, just like, is my mom coming? I feel like you can smell the roses when she comes closer because I feel like I'm outdoors, like I'm seeing you out there working on your yard. And I feel like she's right by the front door of like your uh, roses. You must have flowers or some type of roses that your mom was like with you at this moment where it was like, man, I really got to cut those things down. I got to pull the weeds and I feel smell like I see you pulling her birthday was yesterday. Ay, mi amor. Aww. <laughs> Aww. And so she's coming in in this beautiful way because I wanted to say happy birthday. But I also feel like you, when you were out there, you either were going to pull some roses for her. And I feel like, you know, the mason jars, you put the roses in the house and you have all the dogs and you're making sure they're fed. And you look at your dad and I want to give like check on him and see he's okay. When I feel into this, I definitely get the sense, um, Dad, you know, they're just bringing awareness to his well-being. And there's lots of healing going to the leg and lots of healing going to his um, <coughs> body here as I feel into his essence. And they're just so proud of you. And, and the care that you you give, 
I also feel like an uncle that's also stepping forward and he's giving gratitude because he's making me feel like you pushed him in a wheelchair. And I get the sense that you are part of his care, but I feel like he has some kind of connection to the Bronx or New York or some type of like energy out in the East Coast because this is the vibe this uncle is giving me. And I do feel as if he comes closer, he just, I, like if he was in the wheelchair, I feel like, like I'm looking at you and I'm just getting like this reassurance, like I'm holding your hand, like, oh, thank you. If you would understand this, Maida, because he's just got gratitude. He's got this gray sweater, white t-shirt. Yes, your uncle. And I know that um, when he comes close, I don't know if you know the name Fred or Federico, but I'm also hearing the name Fred. I also know that um, they're just saying, girl, why aren't you working? Like you need to be doing your cartas. You need to be talking to your people. You need to be out there doing the work. Be careful for him. And I'll, laid him to rest god bless you and so he's just coming in and just saying like a trabajar come on no haces flaja you know don't like i feel like you're sitting there you're like i don't know what i'm gonna do i don't know what i'm gonna do and he's like so if you call me we'll put you to work <laughs> So I'm going to leave you with his love and their love, your mother's love. Your mother comes in and she brings healing around the heart. She knows that um, you also miss her. And she's also giving me um, a heart of a, like a crystal. So you must have been working with crystals because I see a little crystal here that she's giving me with a heart to you. She goes, con Dios, uh, I wanted to say Dios bendita, like, like with God or like with God, all things are possible. It's the sense that I'm getting, but there's here, she's speaking to me in Spanish. Um, and so I know that she's showing me her couch also. It's kind of like a darker suede and brown in it. So she must be taking me to her house. It's a very little house. And I feel like she just rested and you you have a memory of just walking in the door and she's sitting there and you're like, hi mom, what do you need today? I know. And then she would sit there like with my head hurting. And so you're playing back all these memories. And what she's saying is don't go back and think about those things. Think about the fun, like you're smiling and you're being traviesita and you're coming up the stairs. And I feel like you had stairs that went down and there was this like sidewalk and you were this little girl just playing out there with your friends and you had your girlfriends mm -hmm. outside. Like Jenny from the block is what I'm getting. So literally I heard the name Jennifer. So you must have had a friend named Jennifer as well. And, and she's saying, remember, remember those, not when I was sick, Remember you having fun with the kids around the neighborhood. And that's what she's saying. You'll have friends. You'll know which ones to trust. And the ones that um, don't resonate with you, that's okay. So I leave you with her love, your uncle's love, and the dog's love. So thank you so kindly. Oh, your dog is saying there's a bone buried by the tree or there's something buried by the tree, he says. And so I, I leave you with that. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful, Debbie. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Um, I know we're almost out of time, but I, I did want to, um, I was feeling drawn to Tammy and I, I know Tammy as well. Um, and we, we haven't gotten to talk in so long though, but um, Tammy, for you, um, I definitely could feel your mom coming in and I also could feel your German shepherd coming in as well. Um, so I just want to make sure I give you a little shout out from um, mom and she's, she's sitting there with a rolling pin and she's got the flower and she's um, got it out on the counter there and she's like making her dough and making sure everything's perfect and I know that your mom always would have looked dainty and lovely even when she was in baking mode in her kitchen I know that she loves to visit you when you're in the kitchen cooking too I know that she loves to sing and hum into your ear because she has that fun um, moving into that dance with you when you're um, in cooking and baking mode too I know that February which has just passed uh, recently was a significant month for you um, and again we haven't talked so you need to let me know what happened back in February, but she lets me know that this was a very significant shift in month for you too as well. And that that has like shifted things, um, like kind of almost catapulted things forward for you and, and kind of like pushed you um, farther down your path than it were before. Um, I also know you've been working with the crystals and your healing in a little bit of a different way um, that you show me and that your um, that your um, your work with your drumming too has been picking up as well. And she's showing me that you've been putting the pieces together to create your own version of like how you heal and how you work. Uh, with their clients as well too so i know this to be very important i do feel dad coming in as well he comes and brings this very kind of stoic grounded very masculine presence wants to wrap his um, arms around you too uh, for the times where you feel a little bit weary and a little bit tired so your mom is going to bake you something make you some soup make you some cookies make you some bread put that smell into the home so you can feel like feeling of home again too for your sort of inner tammy as well too um, and with that, um, you know, your German Shepherd, your dog Greta comes in with dad, 
he puts his hand right there on her neck and lets you know, I have her, I have her, we're, we're okay here, we're okay here. Um, I do believe we're about um, at an anniversary of a passing there for you as well, Tammy. So I know that to be very important. I can feel the love and I can feel the tears for you um, as well as we come into that time where we are um, acknowledging our loved ones that have passed too, including our pets, because we never stop missing them. They're like our children, you know? Um, so quite beautiful. I'm so happy that they came in for you, Tammy, too. Um, I also need to really quick give you the card and it says um, King Tide, plenty, prosperity, receiving the fullness of life. So letting you know that success is here for you right now, my darling, um, to let you know that that is happening for you. So um, I'm going to leave you with that, Tammy. Um, yeah, it's that time of year, right? I'm going to leave you with that. And um, I'm going to close with a quote. Hang in there, Debbie, because I want to get your final last thoughts too before we say, um, you know, in the power of love and infinity. So this is a quote by, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right again. I tend to find a lot of people with hard names to pronounce, Solange Nicole. And um, when you have the power to love, that strength, that courage is infinite. That love is infinite. There's nothing finite about its presence for love never dies. And of course, that's what we work through as mediums to remind people that love never dies because we are love. We are from the infinite. We are from the divine. We're just immersed into this beautiful reality. Um, and Debbie, what would you like to say about love before we, you're very welcome, Tammy, before we say goodbye. Mm -hmm. A little final think, message. When you look at love, many of us had great loss in love. And sometimes we block that love from coming back in. And so I ask that you keep an open heart, an open mind, an open spirit to welcome love back, whatever that looks like or feels like. Sometimes we want to have it painted with a certain picture of what it should look like. But whatever's presenting to, your, to you in this moment, honor that. Be okay with that way of them loving you now and let it unfold more. Yeah. So thank you, Jenna. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Debbie, for, you know, and, and never give up on love. It takes yeah. courage, just keep, never, never give up on it. Never love wins. Up. Always been a, love wins. <laughs> love will give up on you. <laughs> love yeah. will not give up on you, so don't give up on love. <laughs> Right. Love always wins. Um, yeah. Debbie, thank you for so much for being my first guest on my first show. I love you dearly. You're my sister, as many of the women here too are as well. I want to thank everybody for showing up here today and for all of your loving support, all of your beautiful comments, um, all of your contributions and your lovely questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being you. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Debbie will be on next Wednesday, right? With your show, yes. which and Debbie will be here yes. on Sacred Spiral on Wednesday. And I'll be back next Friday with Colin Walker. And we're talking about the cosmic shift. So that's going to be super exciting as nice. well. So be well, be happy, have a beautiful weekend, and let love be your compass. So goodbye, everybody. And thank Bye, you. Everybody. Congratulations, Grant. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye.